Welcome back to Death Toll Racing. I got myself a Jeep. What we're gonna do today is install a worn winch and the brackets that you can get from Mopar or you can get them from Warren um, that will directly fit it onto the front of our Jeep. Um, and it only works on the steel bumper group Jeeps. Here is my Jeep. See, it's built just for me. It says right there. Um, Base Jeep, Wrangler, Unlimited, it's four-door. Uh, I got, uh, here's the transmission I wanted, so that's the engine you get with it because it's your only option. So six-speed with a V6. Um, and then we got all the base crap um, and then all this crap, so heated leather, blah, 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 all that stuff, so it's nice for my pansy ass. And then uh, we got blind spot stuff, which is actually kind of cool. Advanced safety group, I believe this is where the adaptive cruise comes in. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, I always try to make sure I get adaptive cruise, and it is really weird with a manual, but it still works. You can actually shift with it and everything. Uh, but I really like it, uh, adaptive cruise. It's one of uh, one of the new features that's coming out in all these new cars that is actually really, really handy. So I got Gorilla Glass, and then I got this guy, 488 gears. Only on the rear, though. I didn't get him in the front. It doesn't say in front, but no, I got him front and rear. They only show the rear, though. Um, that's pretty cool. That you can only get with a manual, as far as I could tell. It wasn't an option on the auto. Uh, it was grayed out. You can only get that with a manual. We were only just playing with it. I was obviously getting the manual no matter what. But not very often do you get an option with a manual where you don't get it with the auto. Usually it's the other way around. So, um, and that's about it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Kind of got tiny tires with it. Um, and then look, my hinge gate's reinforced so it won't fall off. So that's kind of cool. Oh, I had to pay extra for that. Um, and then integrated off-road camera and then a Jeep kit. I don't know why I bought that, but I did. Not that I don't have that crap already. Um, so, kind of cool stuff. They nailed the miles per gallon. I get 19. Uh, I got 6,000 miles on it, and my average is like 19.2. Uh, that V6 doesn't feel like it has a ton of torque down low, so uh, I might start looking into tuners or something for it. Uh, if, I can, if I can get that thing tuned a little better down low, um, it'll probably improve my mileage, but it, it seems to be very, very doggy down low, uh, which is really weird because it's a, a decently powerful engine for... I guess a kind of heavy vehicle. So um, anyway, let's get going on putting our winch in. So um, I did not point out my factory 55 ultra hook. So I really like these ultra hooks. Um, I should be sponsored for them because I basically have them in stock. Um, but these are really cool hooks. Uh, allows you to do the side sideways pull when you're storing it. So you can just suck it right up against the fair lead um, sideways so it doesn't stick out or you don't have to hook it to a hook on your bumper or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of nice. And then you can put a shackle in there or you have a hook there. Um, anyway, just, just a nice hook. It's, it's kind of a handy handy hook that looks pretty nice and it actually works really well. But you, you do feel bad the first couple times you use them because you don't want to ding them up so um, anyway let's get going on it it should be pretty easy uh, this is all it's going to take to do it minus the stuff I forgot so uh, there'll probably be a huge pile of tools there I'll show them to you all in the end uh, but to start with we need a t45 to take out all those bolts around where the winch is going to go All right, while I'm at it, I, I'm going to go ahead and remove the outer parts of my bumper. Uh, they make them so these parts are removable and they actually look pretty clean with them off. Nope. I don't think you have to take these out. I think you could have just popped this whole thing out as one, but that's okay. Okay, so it just has these little tabs that you just have to push them out of the way to pull it out. They give us two zip ties and a little bit of decent at best hardware. There's the busy work. So that is 3 16 plate. Looks to be robot welded. Pretty nice open seam on uh, so it's only welded on one side. Not the end of the world, but if it's gonna rust, it's gonna start rusting in there. Okay, so since we do have to take the bumper off, I'm gonna disconnect the wiring now. I think that's the entire wiring for the full front bumper. So that's kind of convenient. Um, now I'm gonna go underneath, take the skid plate off, which is just the bolts around the perimeter. Uh, those are 13 millimeters, so those ones. Um, anyway, now what we gotta do is 
take the basically four bolts on each frame horn off, which are all easy. They're uh, 18 millimeter uh, deep well. They're all easy to get to. And then uh, we already have our wiring disconnected and now the bumper then will come off. So you don't really have to worry about it falling off because these studs are kind of, I, I believe they're locked into the bumper part. Um, so everything should just uh, kind of stay together as you pull it apart. All right, so I'm just disconnecting the wires uh, from the little Christmas tree clips. Uh, those just that wiring needs to just get moved down a little bit so that it doesn't get pinched in between the uh, winch plate and the bumper when we go to put it back together. Um, these are what hold up the back of the bumper, basically holding the weight of the winch so it's not trying to torque on the frame ones. Okay, and as you can see, I'm having a little bit of difficulty on these. I'll explain here in just a second. Okay, I'm going to show you what I'm fumbling around with um, on this thing. So, flip you around here. On this bracket, it hits this nut that's welded on to the bracket that holds the skid plate on. Um, and unfortunately, Warren didn't know that bracket, that part was there. So, if you look at the drawing or their little picture, um, it doesn't have that back side with the nut on it. So uh, the L bracket I was just showing you is on top of that, but the nut on mine is attached. There was nothing going to that nut, but um, it's attached to this bracket there and it's in the way. So I can either modify the bracket that was on the Jeep or I can modify the bracket that's on the worn stuff. And normally I would always modify the aftermarket stuff, but in this situation, I think I'm gonna modify the Jeep's bracket because I don't want to, uh, take away from the winch um, and that little nut thing back there is not doing anything it's just uh, it, it's there for an option of some sort that we don't have so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that um, it's hits on both sides but it's it's keeping me from lining it up on the drive on the driver's side so okay so it's really easy to get those things off of there I just used I believe it was a 13 millimeter uh, on the impact and uh, just hit them real hard and they pop right off of there All right, and I just put a couple bolts, pushed a couple bolts through just to hold the front of it up um, since I didn't have four hands. All right, and so I just set it on there. It is going to flex down uh, a little bit because the winch is pretty heavy. Um, and then the, you can't really put it in the wrong spot. It only fits in one spot, so pretty easy stuff. All right, in hindsight, I should have put that cable on first before I put the bumper, uh, the winch on, but uh, it's, it wasn't, it's not hard to get to either way, um, but it would have been a lot easier if that was out. Um, and then a lot of guys will drop these winches in after they get the bumper on, and I guess it can be done. Obviously, it can be done because that's the way they do it, um, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure why. Um, the only problem with having the winch on there now is it's, it flexes that, that uh, winch plate down a little bit. But uh, with a jack and a 2x4, you can kind of just flex it right back to where it's supposed to be, line the holes up, slip the bumper on, uh, and you're back in business. So it, it goes pretty, pretty easily uh, doing it that way, even by yourself. Uh, there wasn't really any part of this that was a challenge to do by myself. So I'm going to swap out the bolts that Warren gives you uh, with some flex head, uh, flange, flange head hex bolts. Um, that, I just think they look a lot nicer and they are quite a bit better of a bolt. And I, I'm just putting all the factory uh, T45 bolts back through the holes, but I am adding, uh, I'm just putting a flange head uh, hex bolt on the bottom, or a hex nut, I'm sorry, on the bottom. They're eight millimeter. All right. so. To put this factory 
Factor 55 on, there is a clip in here. So you will need snap ring pliers and just take it out like that. The pin drops out, put it on, put it back, put the clip back. And then push the clip down into the grooves since it probably didn't go all the way in there. So it's in there now. That just keeps the pin from falling out. It doesn't have any load on it. These hooks are tested. So it's 16,000 pound rated, which is more than our winch is rated for. However, uh, 31,360 for the hook. And then on the back side is the, for this closed system shackle mount, uh, that is 48,180. So uh, a, lot, a lot more than our winch, winch, bumper, Jeep, frame, or anything on it uh, can handle. So um, breaking this hook is probably never going to happen. Um, something else will break first. So what I really like about them though is when you suck them in, um, they sit flat on this rubber, keep it tight there. Okay, so my stainless steel rod there, that's just a TIG rod, so you can use any piece of wire. I just shoved it down in between, it's really hard to see, between the battery box, just so I can get it up to this wiring up here. Um, it's just, you can get your fingers through there, but it's hard to fish the wire through without taking the inner wheel well off. But I just pushed it down and then here it is. So, uh, and then I got my battery cables here, which are just routed from, you know, around with the other wiring. And then I just pulled them out here because it was easy. This pulls out pretty easy. So what I'm gonna do is just loop that through the wire there. Uh, I'll bend that wire and then I'll just pull these things up to where we can work with them. Just zip tie them as often as you can, making sure they don't hit anything sharp. And then I have them here. I got this, this was pulled out so that I could uh, get in there. But uh, I'm zip tied to an existing wiring running up. I believe it's the ABS stuff. I'm actually not sure what it is. It's coming from the front of the car and going up. So that's what I zip tied to. Um, and now I just got to cut the little tags off and we have batteries. So. It should technically work now. It's decently fast. Oh, there we go. Now it's in wireless. Let's see if it works. Oh, it does. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty quick too. Hmm. It's pretty fast wireless remote. That's pretty that's pretty cool. All right, and what I meant by the speed of the winch with the remote is the delay from when you push the button on the remote uh, until the remote or until the winch starts actually moving. Um, so that thing fits in there really nicely. I mean, they did a really good job with that, uh, working together with with uh, Jeep and getting that cut out and everything in. Uh, for the right shape. So um, here is all the tools we used. Um, nothing special. So we uh, T45 is about the most special tool on there. Um, and then uh, snap ring pliers if you're going to run that ultra hook. Um, if not, then you won't need the snap ring pliers. So there you it. have it. So I think it looks pretty good. Um, kind of wishing SEMA would get here a little faster so I can get some fenders for this thing. But uh, otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. Guys, hopefully that was helpful for you. And now I'm going to do some honest review on Jeep Rubicons or Jeeps in general. This valley right here uh, should involve a designer and whoever approved the design to get slapped. Um, and especially back here. So one of the stupidest things I've ever seen designed on a car that rocks get stuck in there. I got my first scratch, like pretty big scratch on this thing after about 200 miles. My first piece of basalt gravel was stuck in there. And uh, of course, you know, driving around and it was working around and scratched the shit out of the paint. Um, you know, not a huge deal, I guess, but uh, it's a really, really stupid design uh, to do that. So. In the future, um, after SEMA, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check these things out at SEMA and I'm going to see what kind of fenders people have for them uh, that will toughen up the look of it a little bit and, uh, and maybe fix that problem. That drives me nuts uh, on these things. And then also, since I'm in the rant about a Jeep thing, um, that hole in the frame needs to have a cover on it. Um, so I'm going to cover that. That's open into the frame, so then it just goes down. Um, so I'm going to put a cover on it, not to seal it, but to keep 
you know, when we have snow and de-icer and sand, um, it, it, it literally is like driving through a mud puddle the whole time. So it, it will basically fill that whole frame up with, with, with that stuff. Um, there is drains and stuff, but that's a very big hole. So big stuff can get in there. Eventually they're going to clog the drain up. Um, and then I'm going to eventually rot the frame out. So, um, I want to, I want to fix that. So I'll put some covers on that. So I'll make some or see if someone makes some, it looks like they have provisions for a cover. So maybe they just forgot to put a cover on mine. It's supposed to be covered. I don't know. Uh, but it's like that on both sides. So I'm going to do that before this winter. Um, otherwise really like the Jeep, my first Jeep Wrangler. Uh, and then it's a Rubicon, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so far I like it after 6,000 miles. Um, it reminds me of a miniature K5 Blazer. That's what it design. That's what it kind of drives like. Um, if, if any of you have ever had one of those, I have, I have a K5 Blazer and I have over 400,000 miles on it. So I have a lot of seat time in that thing. Um, it was lifted on 38. So it, it drives, you know, a lot more rudimentary than this does. But, uh, as far as the the way it handles the road and stuff, it reminds me a lot of that K5 Blazer. So I really like it uh, in that regard. So, uh, but I may be biased. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful and uh, we'll see you soon.